So you've got to take risks. Just a bit too hard. Well, everybody, here we are today. Yes, at the warehouse. How are you all? I hope you're all very well. So, let's have a look at what you've got to do to stay in business as a photographer. It's critical when things don't necessarily go your way. You've got to work out workarounds. You can't just throw everything in the bin. It's also critical when you design your products that you design them so that they've maybe got a second life somehow. Uh, yeah, today I wanted to talk about, as a working photographer, and with the world being very full of photography and images and all those sorts of things, how do we make sure we stay alive? How do we make sure we have multiple income streams to, uh, to keep it all going? I'm just gonna pop you down on the table here. When you publish stuff, see all the stuff here? They're all things I've published. Over there, that's greeting cards. Over here, this is books, journals, and so on. How do we make sure we have enough income streams that it's not just about photography, it's uh, as in services, it's not just about selling prints, it's not just about selling cards, it's not just about selling books. How do we make sure it all keeps going? And it is by doing all of these different things, that's why I've been here for 29 years. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's quite hard to make sure that your investment works out. Today I specifically want to show you about my book, my first book, which I uh, originally published in 2012. I self-published, it cost a lot of money to get it out. And I had this crazy idea of doing five different jackets. So literally same book on the inside, five different jackets on the outside. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five. Now I did that for a few reasons. I thought, you know, why not? It gives, uh, it gives a chance to pe pe for people to be excited about the one that they like. It also gave retailers an opportunity to get one or two or three or four, and they'd get a few copies of each, which of course is amazing. But one problem with getting five different jackets, which I decided to order evenly, not knowing better, what that meant is with equal numbers, one would be more popular than another, and it would run out first, of course. But the shop still wanted it, because it was popular. So in the end, I've had to reprint the covers, the jackets of the books, because they can come off, and, uh, and replace them with the ones that didn't sell so well. So the white one was probably the least popular, the orange being the next least, although I did that for a specific purpose. It was one that you couldn't buy in a shop, you could only buy it from me. So yes, of course, no one took all five because I wasn't selling them the fifth one. Glad I remembered that. Look, 2012 is a long time ago now. So what do we do? I've reprinted those covers, but it means there's some hard yakka in recovering the books that are white into the books that people like. And in this case today, we're gonna do the Pulp Fiction cover, which is the most popular cover. Pulp Fiction sold out years ago, that uh, jacket and um, I've been re-jacketing the orange and the white ones for a couple of years. In the meantime, I've produced two other books, different sizes and different subjects, and this book is just about to sell out. I'm going to do a second edition, probably in 2019. I want to take you through that process and, and talk to you a little bit about what, it's, what you know, th these are some of the hardships of making sure your investment keeps paying off. Because if you invest in something and then you don't make a profit, well, you're not in business. So then you have to work out how to keep making it go. And uh, this investment, which was many, many tens of that, well, actually it was over $100,000 to create this book. It would have ruined me if it hadn't sold. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I want to show you what I've got to go through to rejacket these to keep them selling. So to make sure that we get 100% sales. That's what it's all about. So let's have a look at what you've got to do to stay in business as a photographer. And today, I forgot to mention, we're also doing some printing. So today I'm gonna to be multitasking. We're gonna be using the beautiful Epson 270, as it's known in Australia, or it's just, I think, known as the 20,000, the 20,000 uh, Shaw Color printer. We're gonna be using that today to print some beautiful canvases. And I'm experimenting with some new canvas, which I'm pretty excited about. We're gonna turn the little beauty on. 
The warehouse is a bit of a mess at the moment. I hadn't planned on getting this new printer until I had moved and fully moved in, as luck should have it. The old printer ceased to function prior to me getting everything set up here, so we had to move a little bit early. That's the printer beeping telling me it's ready. Let's search here. This is an order. I've got to go get my glasses. Excuse me a second. It's just a bit too hard. Just a bit too hard. All right, so yeah, the hardships of the hardships of staying in business as a photographer. And, and it's not always straight lines. Sometimes when you, you're in business, you've just got to take risks. You've got to take a risk. I mean, I think the biggest part of being in business, any type of business, definitely photographic business, is how do you stand out? How do you be different? You've got to do it because there's so many of us around these days. So you've got to take risks. So what are, what are profiles? Well, profiles are, which is a target sheet, I think they call them, target something. You do one of these things which uses your printer and your substrate, paper, canvas, whatever, and it tells the scanner what the color profile is for that substrate and your particular printer, giving you exactly the right colors. I've just gotten the guys who do that for me to do it for me. I've downloaded it, I've got to install it in the, uh, the ICC profile section on the computer. I know this is pretty nerdy stuff, it's not about cameras, but hey, there's way more to photography than just cameras. I mean, the most, most exciting part of photography for me, besides the actual capturing, is when it's on the wall. They're the two ex most exciting parts. And then maybe looking at shots after you've had a bit of a session. So yes, printing is, is relatively complicated, uh, but very, very rewarding. Would you like a jelly, baby? Still can't do my Tom Baker, it's very distressing. Would you like a jelly? Would you like, would you like a jelly, baby? A jelly, baby? A jelly, a jelly, baby? Off it goes. Just working out the paper, exactly where the end of the paper is. And there it is printing. That blue light there, that's actually the printer working out exactly where the substrate is so it can keep the printing as accurate as possible. That's pretty cool. My old printer didn't have that. They give you cartridges just to charge the machine up and they come with uh, 110 mils. And then I've started to put in the new 700 mil cartridges. And in this country, they cost close to $300 each. Alrighty, so what we've got to do, what we've got to do is get some books, ones that are the wrong color. Here comes the print, looking great. Okay. Making coffee table books is hard work because they are rather heavy. Um, those books weigh weigh uh, just shy of 15 kilos each, 14.8 kilos. So this is a box of book that's never been opened since it was originally made. I know which color it is based on these numbers here. Number five is orange. Take off the jackets, take off the shrink wrap. So that's a bit sad because you're wasting money here, but you're wasting less than you'd waste if you never sold them. And that's it. So. This is what you've got to do to clear those last of that stock. I think Apple are really good at this. I think Apple makes us, make us wait sometimes for years while they're clearing stock they can't clear. And they hold on to products way, 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 way longer than they should. Luckily, a book is not technology, so it doesn't have the same Moore's Law. We don't have the same problem when we make books. So this is part one, shedding them of their original orange jacket. Of course, I had to get new jackets printed and that cost a fair bit of money because doing it outside of the overall production meant you don't get any real economies of scale. In the end, I printed more than I needed because it was one of those things where you get 500 jackets and it costs, let's say $600 and get a thousand jackets and it costs $650. So I kind of got more than I needed, but the reason I did that was some do get damaged, some don't fold correctly. And in the case of that happening, you waste some. I just thought, why not? Seeing it was such a small, okay, the print's finished. Auto cut is turned on at the moment, so we'll just, Go keep an eye on that. Oh yep, we're finished. 
Okay, here we go. And done. There it is. Okay. So I'm just going to let that off gas. Loving that. Look at that. You've seen that in real time with these books. And I want to stretch that canvas. So here we have the jacket. The first one on the top is a bit dusty. So we're going to take one. So it's, it's, it's kind of easy and it's kind of not. So these are pre-scored, but different companies scored, scored them at different qualities. This is called a French fold. So we have to very carefully break the fibers on the French fold. Okay, this one I don't like, so we're discarding it. I'm gonna go again. Just inspect this one a little more closely. Yep, this one's better. Top of the box always gets a little bit ratty. Okay, French fold one. Now the French fold is the best way to do a jacket because it makes the edge of the jacket much, much stronger. So this is the primo approach. Okay, once we've done that, get the book. We line it up with the ink. So I've just worked out all of this myself because of course the original books were jacketed by the factory. And so I had no idea. Even so I did visit the factory, but I wasn't there for the wrapping and binding part. I was there for the printing part to approve colors. And that is how we rejacket a book. Number two, and so on. So it's critical when things don't necessarily go your way, you gotta work out workarounds. You can't just throw everything in the bin. It's also critical when you design your products that you design them so that they've maybe got a second life somehow. And part of having a removable jacket means we can second life. And so with all my books since then, I've printed extra jackets at the time of manufacture to mean I don't have to print them at a later date. It brings these to life. It also has allowed me to update the jacket slightly and make it feel more contemporary. Because once the book came out, I got lots of reviews and uh, I've been able to put them on the jacket since then. So look, this is just a small part of photography life, staying in business, doing super exciting things, of which making books is super exciting. It's probably my favorite part of the whole thing of being a photographer, is getting to make books. And um, I really wanna see every single one of these books Let's find a home and have a life. I think it's super important. And I'm a bit of a greenie, so it's good for the environment as well that we don't just throw them in the bin because they've got the wrong jacket. We don't throw all of it in the bin, we throw a small part of it in. Stretch bars. But firstly, I'm gonna pack those books. Back in the box they came from. This is the one we just printed. Put it down upside down. Put the frame on it. Check that it's the right size. Yep. So I hope there's a little insight into just some of the things, some of the little details you've got to work on in your photographic business to make sure everything keeps on rolling. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please like, please share if you think there's something worth sharing. And um, I'll see you in the next one.